Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Neutralized podcast. I say back because I assume that you've been listening to other other episodes, but uh, I mean it's, it's not for sure. So I just I guess I'll just say welcome to the Neutralized podcast. And uh, David, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I've been intermittently fasting for the entire mm. day, so haven't eaten since breakfast and it's uh, around 7 p.m. in the evening. Yeah, so when are you eating next? I'm eating tomorrow for breakfast again. So I'm doing a 24-hour fast. Right, okay. And how are you feeling right now? Well, currently I'm feeling quite well and energized. I have been feeling... uh, a dip, which I usually do feel during the uh, hours just after when I would have had lunch. And uh, for perhaps those four hours after lunch, I'd say I usually have energy dips. And after that, my mind's clear and I feel energized again. All right. Okay. So without any carbs in your system, you're still able to be productive and be energized. So that's interesting. Yeah, so I, mm-hmm. yeah indeed. So what's your experience with intermittent fasting? Well, I've been doing it a lot. Uh, I think the first time I tried it was around 2016 or 2017. And uh, I did it for, I think I've been like on and off, but I, I, I had a streak for at least one or two years where I did it almost every day, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, to, begin, to begin with, I, I did morning, no, I did, I did lunch and, and dinner. So right. roughly eating windows between like six and eight hours. And uh, then mm-hmm. recently, I've been switching to breakfast and lunch, and I think it's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Well, so now you eat breakfast and lunch, and do inter- intermittent fasting during the rest of the day every day. Yeah, I well, I guess some days I have a small snack in the afternoon, like around two or three. Uh, okay. Yeah. So my eating window would be roughly eight or, yeah, seven or eight hours. Right. And how do you feel as regards your energy levels during the development of the day? So like, uh, give us a timeline uh, over the average day. How do you feel in the morning, after lunch? in the evening etc right well i i think mostly during my experiments i've been i think i i think that my my energy levels were mostly affected in the beginning of like when i began doing intermittent fasting and that's when i also had the most like the the the, the biggest issues with it i was craving food and, and being tired um Uh but nowadays i just feel kind of normal throughout the day okay well this is like my because this is now my normal state i guess uh having that said i i I do have i did have a couple of months back um some issues during the afternoon where i i felt like i was crashing and Mm -hmm. uh but I, i think that was that had nothing to do with the intermittent fasting itself. It was more like more so the the food I was having for lunch specifically. I think. That was okay. So, what did you change in your diet as regards your lunch? I want to say I I added more carbs. Okay. But there was there were there were so many other things that I I was changing up. In my diet, I was having more fish, for example. I was having having a lot of salmon. And, okay. Uh, 
yeah, it's, it's hard to tell what, what I changed there, but, but I, I'm actually now, nowadays, no longer experiencing that. So that was for maybe a month or so, or perhaps even less than that. Hmm. So perhaps there was something specific that you had added or removed during that period then if you didn't have any problems and then you did have problems for a month and then now again you don't yeah perhaps nothing you can identify right yeah i'm not uh, i mean i i was i remember having like the big issues with that crash and uh, like i i really wanted to keep working in the afternoon but i i just couldn't because i was so tired or drained right um yeah but i'm no longer having that so i'm, I'm not sure what, what what it was perhaps if i because now i'm i have changed so much again like i'm having another a, a very different diet to what i i or well different diet at least to what i was doing earlier and uh, i've also changed location and sleeping patterns so it, it's hard to tell Right. What I was mostly interested in was for our listeners, do you think that there is any specific foods or or any specific inclusion or exclusion of ingredients in one's diet that one should be especially cognizant of when one wants to do the uh, intermittent fasting like should one have something very specific for lunch or should one try to avoid something like you mentioned you added carbs do you think that's uh, Mm -hmm. something effective um i I mean i'm not i'm not sure but i'm not sure what what uh, contributed towards that crash i was having um but i in, in general i think carbs have has not been helping much at all like unless unless i've been like doing crazy amounts of uh physical workouts mm-hmm. i don't think carbs has been helping me that much and uh, i also found that the more carbs i consume the the harder it is it is to control my appetite mm. so right. I, I prefer to do mostly protein and fat and mm-hmm. i think that helps with doing with also keeping up with the intermittent fasting mm, i see so have you found any foods that you that helps with well i do yeah i do think that it's easier to to do the intermittent fasting i usually do these sorts of 24 hour fasts like mm-hmm. once a week or once every two weeks mm-hmm. and i do find that it is much easier to just go for an entire 24 hours if I do not usually like habitually consume a lot of carbs. So Mm -hmm. if I go above, let's say 300 grams of carbs and eat a lot more because I, as you do sometimes uh, exercise quite a bit. Mm -hmm. If I up my carb intake to a, above 300 grams then it is usually a lot harder to uh, focus and have sustained energy levels during that day of fasting Mm -hmm. oh okay okay. yeah so the cognitive and productivity benefits of fasting aren't as prominent if i use a lot of carbs on a daily basis when not fasting right okay yeah i i found that like like one 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 issue with that kind of relates to what you were saying uh that when when you're doing intermittent fasting you you'd like to still consume the required 
amount of calories for mm -hmm. for the entire day but during that short amount of time so having like huge meals with a lot of carbs or mm -hmm. i think just huge meals in general will yeah. will not be very yeah productive for your uh, for your focus right because then you yeah, really like point. crash yeah so that is one thing yeah. I, I would really recommend to, to someone that is trying that wants to try intermittent fasting like space out your your calories so you don't have like a, an insane amount of food at just one point right yeah and that even though it's perhaps a bit hard is a principle that one should try to apply when breaking the intermittent fast as well like not binging on food mm. uh, when you uh, stop your intermittent fast because then you're going to have uh, crashes afterwards uh, probably uh, in in productivity and energy levels so you mean when you're when you have been doing let's say 16 hours of fasting and you have your yeah. first meal that's when you need to chill 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 a little bit well, I think it's definitely something to experiment with for mm. yourself to mm. get to know your own body. But it is indeed a trap that I know some people fall into uh, where they, and I've done this in the past as well, they are a bit hungry and they uh, enjoy the taste of the food so much as well because it's it's much tastier when you haven't eaten for 24 hours for example right right that they then just eat like a lot of food and that uh, isn't sure it's it's giving you an energy boost in a way but it's also uh, quite short-lived usually uh, sort of like consume uh, sugar perhaps mm. Uh, so it's something to be cautious with mm -hmm. and perhaps it's not a problem you can probably consume more than uh, on the average meal so to speak mm -hmm. uh, during the f first meal after intermittently fasting because your stomach is uh, is not full of food and and you're probably gonna respond better to the food that you do eat mm -hmm. uh, through various physiological mechanisms. So I'd say that experiment and that is the key to finding what works for you uh, mm -hmm. in, in regards to intermittent fasting. Uh, have you experimented with any other protocols other than the 16-8 intermittent fasting protocol i couldn't say say that i have been doing uh 48 hour fasts once or twice i think before and then 24 hour fasts but i haven't been doing them consistently like i i've only tried them occasionally so the only thing that I have been doing consistently is the 16, eight hours fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you recall what your experiences were with the, the 24 and 48 hour fasts? I just, I, 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 I don't think I experienced any amazing effects, but I was, I, like I, I think I was a bit surprised how easy it was. Okay. To do it. Right. Um, perhaps one thing that I that I have experienced is clarity of mind when I haven't mm, been eating yeah. for a long time. And 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 also maybe a slight improvement in mood. I think. Right. Yeah. And that I think that's kind of interesting to to ex to experience that at least once that like you do not have to eat all the time because I think that's one thing that you you learn or, or some somehow 
yeah, you you learn that growing up that well, at least in my family, it was it was. Uh, I mean, we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, three meals a day, and sometimes even like some sandwiches or whatever in the evening. And that was normal. So I, like I was stuffed with food, almost <laughs> not okay, not stuffed, but we were we were having food <laughs> like, throughout the day, almost every day, and uh, just experiencing fasting and, and doing a couple of hours or or two days of fasting, and it's no issue. I mean, you're you're it's not like you're gonna die. In in fact, you might even feel better from not eating. So just doing that is quite quite an experience and eye opening. Yeah, it's liberating. You you can travel somewhere. Like just the the fact that you can have that as a tool in your tool set to not have to eat during a single day can make your life simpler in more ways than just boosting your productivity and making your mind clearer during that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is also quite nice or i mean if you i guess i i'd say i'm a, I'm a very kind of practical person in a way um because i i see it as a, a benefit not having to eat so saving that time is also a, a benefit for me to do intermittent fasting i don't have to prepare my food and i don't have to spend time eating so it's quite useful to cut yeah. up one meal because it, it is quite time consuming and to to eat all the time or to eat so much. No. But a lot of people they yeah. I, I think they 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 don't see it that way. They they enjoy food more uh yeah perhaps than I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoy food a lot, but I think that intermittent fasting has so many benefits and mm. very few risks mm, yeah. like it's it's not gonna have any negative impacts on most people i think perhaps if you have like diabetes i'm not sure how well it works you should probably talk to your doctor mm. but for essentially everybody else it's going to at worst lead to slight reductions in energy levels temporarily. Mm. Yeah, it is quite harmless to try it out at least. Yeah. I mean, if, if you find so, that it's not mm-hmm. working for you, then just quit it, but it's not like you're gonna die from not eating for 24 hours or 16 hours. Yeah, precisely. Um, so if people do wanna experiment with intermittent fasting how do you recommend that people go about doing it well i'm not i'm not sure um i'd I'd probably if you find it hard to try just one even like one day of eight hours like eight hours eating window and then and then not eating I guess just start with, I don't know, 10 hours or 12 hours of eating and then try to cut it out for the rest of it. But um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's not that complex. I I kind of kind of uh, see it just as don't like try not to eat or try to You know, like I think one I, one thing that I could say is um, or recommend if you find that it is hard if you're consuming a lot of carbs, I guess that's the one thing. Um, then just try to have some more protein and fats while you're you're doing your fast or while you're eating, and I think you'll find mm. that it's a lot easier to handle your um, appetite. Mm. I guess that would yeah. be one thing. But other than that, is just cut back on the hours that you're eating and. Do it slowly if you can't handle uh, eight hours. Yeah, I agree with that. If you're going to do like a fast that's relatively short so that you're going to be eating every day essentially for uh, 
eight hours perhaps, and then not even for the rest of the days, then I also recommend that you gradually increase the amount of hours that you fast. However, if you want to do more of a 24 or 48 hour fast, I actually mm -hmm. think that the benefits start coming uh, at least m more after, uh, well, if you start in the morning, then I think that you should at least wait until the evening uh, or rather the morning after with eating because the evening uh, hours at like, uh, yeah, at 7 p.m. where I'm at now and then for like four hours more, I think that I'll be very productive and energized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you are fasting from the morning or from the evening, uh, dependent on where you're starting, uh, I'd highly recommend that you go for a full 24 hours and end up uh, where you began so that you get those final hour benefits. Uh, so I'd expect that if you do uh, dinner to dinner, then you'd probably get some benefits during the uh, around lunchtime uh, up to dinner uh, mm -mm. of the second day. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually do not do that because my understanding of the research is that the benefits are uh, more and stronger for uh, fasting in the afternoon. Uh, so that would be another tip for how to fast, uh, in my opinion. Uh, eating in the morning and then not eating until as far as you like uh, would be the way I would go about it. Right. I think, uh, yeah. Mm. I'm not sure because I, I found, I, I, as I said, I, I found it pretty Easy not because when I when I started doing intermittent fasting, I was having breakfast and lunch and then no dinner, but I usually had a huge lunch, so I, there was no issue for me to go to bed and without like without much in my stomach. Um, and I think that will be something that people might find hard to go to bed mm. uh, while while you're feeling perhaps you're feeling hungry. But but as I but, but as I mentioned earlier, um, I think. It, your your appetite is gonna depend a lot on what you're consuming, what kind of foods you're consuming. So yeah. if, if you stay away from sugars and uh, and fast carbs, I think you're gonna be fine. Yeah, I think that there is a large degree of individual variance in how people will uh, experience fasting from lunch to uh, the next day, and that some of that variance is due to the the lifestyle factor that is what you eat mm. and how many carbs you eat for example so have you been doing intermittent fasting mostly or how what's your schedule what's what's your kind of schedule right now yeah as i mentioned earlier i do 24 hour fasts and i do it about once per week or once per two weeks. So anywhere between every four days, try to keep at least three days eaten fully uh, between each fast at least. And then uh, two weeks is pretty much maximum for me. Okay. But like during uh, normal or during the other days, you're, you're having uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner as normal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I try not to eat around uh, three and a half hours before I go to bed. Yeah, that is that is. I think that's huge. Yeah, in my experience, it is so, as well. Uh, very much so for sleep quality enhancement. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. What? 
what what did you say is huge in your opinion well i think uh i think i i, I notice i do notice a huge difference from when i'm having dinner or food late in the evening compared with when i when i have my last meal at around i don't know four or five in the afternoon or even earlier than that um i have a much harder time falling asleep i like i don't get tired it's and when i uh, and I, i do i think also that my sleep quality is reduced from from having that much food in my stomach and I'm, it makes sense also that like when, when your body when you're lying down and you're sleeping and your body wants to rest and it's and it's uh, occupied with uh, processing the food in your stomach you're just not gonna be able to uh, recover as well but i'm not sure of the science do do you know the science of why uh, one sleeps better from not eating a couple yeah. of hours yeah. before um, well i would think that what you said is a strong factor that your body has to do work to break down the food and so uh, if your body has to do work breaking down the food then your um, body's gonna either require more time or not take uh, at all the amount of good sleep so deep sleep and uh, rapid eye movement sleep that it actually needs So essentially, if you eat too much too close to bedtime, then your body isn't going to have enough time. Likely, if you sleep, for example, for eight hours and then your alarm goes, then you're not going to give your body enough time to uh, both break down food and also to uh, recover in other ways that it would have had it not had such large amounts of food in its system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just like I have that I've had that like that is my experience at least from from eating and sleeping. And uh, I, I also know that my roommate and our dear friend uh our common friend uh he he also he was having this is just a, an anecdote but he he was having dinner every like as as normal every every i think he's been doing that for most of his life i guess and then uh, when i told him that well i, I don't have dinner anymore cuz yeah, i'm sleeping so much better he tried it and he actually got the like a very clear result cuz he was using the aura ring to measure his mm-hmm. sleep and uh, after he stopped having dinner he, his sleep perform his sleep performance that that is such a weird thing like such a weird term <laughs> sleep performance but anyways his, yeah. his sleep stats they went up like like i don't know a lot he was he was right. told how much effect it had, it had on his sleep so for anyone who 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 who's listening in, i think you should try it try skipping dinner at least one day and see how you're sleeping because it's amazing. Yeah, skip it or or move it backwards in time so to speak. Yeah, I mean I mean you don't have to cut out dinner entirely. You can just move it move it back a little, like two hours or something. Yeah, precisely. And then avoid snacking as well, uh, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, afterwards just to try it out and see how it works and as you mentioned what we we've discussed here today is mostly anecdote so yeah, our yeah, personal is. experiences and i think that there is a lot of research on animals and uh, biological mechanisms of fasting uh, and other health benefits of fasting there's also some human research on i think mm-hmm. uh, but mostly for cognitive performance productivity and energy levels there isn't all that much human research in the form that we uh, 
would have preferred there to be, like placebo-controlled studies on healthy humans, mm. uh, looking at the effects of intermittent fasting and comparing different regimens, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so the science is still evolving, uh, and whilst that is the case, informed self-experimentation is uh, the way to go to actually increase your cognitive performance, well-being, energy levels, uh, whatever you want to achieve, mm -hmm. I think. You know what we should do? We should write an article about how, uh, how to do intermittent fasting and measuring your sleep uh, performance through the Neutralize app. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Tell me more about what you're thinking about here. Yeah. Well, I think uh, like to determine the, the, the effects of intermittent, fa inter intermittent fasting on your, your sleep performance, um, I think you should, I think you should uh, do some kind of journaling where you actually write down the effects or somehow measure it. Right. while you are experiment, doing this experiment. And you could actually use the, our application, our software to do that. Because mm -hmm. we, have, we have those tools in our application. So perhaps we could create a guide for people how to set that up in the application and then do the test or do that experiment. Yeah, I'm thinking how could we implement like intermittent fasting because we have new tropics that we can enable people to log that they have used right uh, and we have tests for uh, subjectively measuring uh, one's sleep for example yeah but we don't have any currently any uh, functionality for defining what fasting regimens you have used that is no, something we, that I we mean, have to or perhaps you can journal on the side is that right what you're yeah that, that was what i was thinking we, we, we were we have don't we don't have any way to track your if, if the if the intervention let's say let's call it that you're using is intermittent fasting then we don't have support for that in our application because we only have support for for nootropic interventions but you could, of course, journal that on the side. Yeah, you keep right. Also, of, of when you're eating and yeah, when you're eating, and then you can use the Neutralize app to test your sleeping performance. Yeah, you can combine a journal and the Neutralize app to make your uh, your intermittent fasting. Uh, more scientific, your self-experimentation with your intermittent fasting more scientific through mm -hmm. collecting data on yourself and uh, then uh, at least in the future we will be able to help you to analyze that data uh, to get answers to whether your interventions are effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is really what we want to like we, we, what we want to do with the application or I mean we, we want to give people the good content and information about nootropics and the science of it. But we also want to help people with self-experimentation and seeing how they can improve their mood and cognitive abilities. And yeah, yeah. So, so it makes sense, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very common uh, for people who want to self-experiment who want to find out what they can do to improve their mood or their focus, for example, mm -hmm. to just take something and then try to feel my more focused now. Am I feeling a bit better? And then trying to compare it with some other point in time, which they perhaps vaguely remember. Mm, yeah. And why not just use a rating scale then uh, to uh, when you are actually using in the tropic say okay now i'm feeling like my focus is at 97 mm -hmm. and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 
And then when you're not using nootropic, you can say, okay, now my focus is perhaps like 60. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can do that experiment over and over again. And as our application evolves, you'll get more and more help from our tools for statistical analysis uh, in order to really figure out in a scientific manner what is actually working for you. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, sounds interesting. Sign up in our application. <laughs> yeah, precisely. It's available. Uh, and as we mentioned, always evolving. You can find it over at neutralize.com. That is N O O T R A L I Z E dot com. Yeah. So, I, I think. Uh... Yeah, I'm really happy with this. Um, thank you, David, for coming on to the, to the podcast and talking about intermittent fasting with me. Well, thank you for having me on. I enjoyed the conversation as well. And I hope, every, I hope to see everyone back for the next episode. Thank you. Yeah, see you then. Bye.